Well, now, Gail and Kelly, since I put Kyle on the spot for doing a presentation, have you guys, when was the last time you guys presented a Fourth Tuesday? Uh, I don't know that we've actually done a Fourth Tuesday. Oh, I think they just volunteered, Sam. I've done some shows at the nursing home. Yes, yes, you guys have, and there's always been such neat shots. But um, I don't know, maybe Sam can talk to you guys afterwards about doing a presentation. Too. Uh -huh. Not that I'm volunteering you or anything. <laughs> A lot. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Yes. In all seriousness, it, I, I enjoy these. Well, front thing, I don't mind talking. But I like, especially for this one, because I've done a remarkably poor job of actually going through my some hundreds of photos I kept from last summer to actually find, to actually put together a story like this, which is part of why I volunteered was because I now have a story for myself mm -hmm. to, to tell, which is fun. Yeah, neat. That's something that I, I think has always been official doing any sort of presentation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I build presentations for work uh, a lot of the time. And as soon as I just start talking about it, I'm like, oh, yeah, I should add about information about this. I should rearrange these things. It just starts seeming more and more like a story once you start talking about it. And nothing like the pressure of a presentation to give you that uh, motivation. But it's pretty cool. All right, I'm going to be right back. All right, and welcome everyone who's joining us on Zoom and on Facebook Live now as well. Um, we will get started in just a few minutes. Thirty participants, thirty-one participants. Well, this is fun. Hi, everybody. Basically, doing a mic check for all the folks who just joined, so they know that they can, in fact, hear me. Oh, and now my big six-year-old, wee, who's holding his favorite little stuffy. Yellow bunny. Yellow bunny. That's right. <laughs> yep. So this is my presentation. I'm going to do with. Uh, uh, with my friends, we got Kyle right here, Gail and Kelly. Remember, I went on that trip out to Western Kansas last summer. Oh, actually, I have something really cool. Well, shoot. Hmm. Now, I don't, think I don't think I've got that. But, yep. This should be pretty fun. I see pictures of you guys all the time. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. So photogenic. Looks like his mama. Looks like his mama. Mm -hmm. You see, we're right up there, and then there's Gail and Kelly. You've met them. I don't know if you've met Kyle. Oh, oh you'll, you'll probably meet Kyle when we go out so. to um, Prairie Chicken, do Prairie Chicken photography in a couple of weeks. Yeah, he's going to come out oh, really cool. early and go photograph the birds. Whoa. There's Sam. Oh, yep, very good. Did you, did, have you met Sam, or did you read that? I met Sam. Ah, awesome. Good job, my little reader. <laughs> yep, he works at the library. Yeah. That's why there's so many books. That's that's right. And lots of books behind us too. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's right. Those are the our trip our travel books, so it's perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, let me take down my screen. Oh, no, oh, wrong thing. Okay. All right. Well, it's seven o'clock, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn on the gallery mode here so we can see everybody. Um, excited to have a, a big, big group of presenters, um, relatively speaking, at least this month for Fourth Tuesday Photography. 
Um, we've got, uh, I'm not sure if they're, I think it'd be in the, I'm not sure if you all see it the same way I do, but in the top left, you have Sean Tomlinson, and then we've got Gail and Kelly Noctegal and Kyle Batson all zooming in to talk about their uh, trip they took out to Western Kansas and cool stuff they saw. And I'm um, so um, excited and grateful that, that they are doing this. Um, before I hand it over to them, I just want to highlight a few library events that are coming up. We've got a lot coming up. The day after tomorrow at 7 p.m., we'll be back on Zoom again for um, an event with the Kansas Poet Laureate, Waskar Medina. And he's gonna talk about what poetry means to him, how we can use poetry in our day-to-day -day life and, and just use it as a way to connect with one another. You know, it's National Poetry Month, so we got it in there before the end of the month. Um, and then coming up next week, it's, uh, we've got two more special events on May 4th at, um, at 5 p.m. Actually, I've got need to correct this on the calendar. We've got May the 4th be with you. And Nathan, our IT guy, is going to Zoom with some big Star Wars fans who um, have authentic stormtrooper costumes. And they go around and do events where they are stormtroopers and just have a lot of fun being Star Wars fans. Um, so that's on the 4th. And then on Thursday, May 6th, another special event. We've got um, Wes Jackson, the co-founder of the Land Institute in Salina, and also um, a professor named Robert Jensen. They both have books out that are about Wes and about his sustainability mission. Um, so the program's called Searching for Sustainability on Zoom at 7 p.m. Thursday, May 6th. And then jumping ahead later in May, um, the actually the third Tuesday and the fourth Tuesday programs are both kind of photography related because on a Tuesday, May 18th at 7 p.m., it's uh, Florence Schloniger and Weldon Schloniger. And I believe I saw Weldon. Yeah, Weldon's in the audience. So hello, Weldon. Um, Florence is gonna talk about, um, it's called Crossing Flint, My Personal Journey with the Land and People of the Flint Hills. And um, she's written a book of poetry and has done a lot of, of research and reading and reflecting on this kind of the, the Native Americans that um, you were here before um, you know, white people uh, came here, and um, and she's got a book called Crossing Flint, a, a book of poetry. And then Weldon's photo Weldon's photographs are um, illustrations for that book, so I'll be excited to see those as well. And then on the fourth Tuesday of May, May twenty fifth, so a month from now, we've got um, T. Walton, who is a retired sheriff of Harvey County. And I'm in retirement, he's moved to Seattle, Washington. So because of this whole Zoom thing we're doing, he's able to Zoom in with us and kind of catch up with the uh, Harvey County Newton folks and show off his uh, photos and maybe some of his videos that he does too. And um, I've seen some of them and they're really great. So you won't wanna miss that. All these events are on our uh, Facebook event page. You can find out more about each one and find the links to register on Zoom or just click you're interested and you'll get a reminder to go to them. So I hope that wasn't too long um, before we get to what you all came here for, which is planning and enjoying a Western Kansas photo trip. And um, I guess I'll, I'll let you guys take it away and you can kind of uh, introduce yourselves as you go and, and talk, about, um, talk about this cool uh, trip that you guys took. Let's make sure I can get this to behave itself. I think I just saw everything get dark on the other cameras I can see, so I think it's working. So, hi, everybody. Hope you can hear me. Right, Sam? Yeah, thumbs up? Yeah. Okay, good. So, hi. I'm Sean Tomlinson. This is my big boy, Michael, who's holding his best friend, Yellow Bunny. And I am going to be presenting, while he sidekicks, the trip that I took with, along with my friends Kelly and Gail Noctegal and Kyle Batson out to Western Kansas in June of 2020. Right, yeah, right, face deep in the pandemic. But what can I say? I've got some wanderlust. So the questions, what do I want to do? Like I, I have been a photographer for a long time. I got more serious about my photography actually when my wife was pregnant with him, as a matter of fact. And she said, you know, Sean, we need a good camera. Mm, she regrets telling me that like every day. But then she sees the pictures and she's okay with it. But I love taking pictures of my sons, but I also enjoy taking pictures of nature, wildlife, landscape, stuff like that. So I wanted to go somewhere to see something that I've never seen before. I didn't want to go too far because of the pandemic, but I wanted to go do something. 
So why? Because I have wanderlust. I want to go see new things. How? Well, just a few days when it's convenient, but take a little bit of time off work because it's not like we can really do a whole lot else. And where? Well, I don't know about you guys, but in 2019, I started to hear about this place called Little Jerusalem out there close to Scott City in Oakley. And I was like, that sounds really neat, but how would I ever get out there? What can I see? Well, it opened officially as a state park, I think in like the fourth quarter of 2019. And uh, actually, I think Jim Griggs had, uh, had been, who I see is on the, on the uh, chat. Hi, Jim. And he had posted some beautiful pictures and he had um, provided some further inspiration to, to go out there. Well, something that actually really helped with where um, at my work, I work for Pfizer up in McPherson. I work with the former tourism director of Scott City. Her name is Barbie Winderland, who I invited to the chat and I hope she can, hope she's been able to make it. And she was amazing helping me get set up with a lot of the people I'm going to mention here on the presentation. I maybe I could have blundered my way into it on Facebook, but it was really neat because she had their phone number, she had the name, she had she told me what they could do. And that made the whole trip a lot easier, which was really fun. And hey, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And in this case, that's very much true. So um, for those of us not so familiar with Western Kansas or those of us who think it's basically just nothing until Colorado. So here's Newton way down here. There's big Wichita. And then out here, Scott City and Oakley, there's 70. And those dots right there, that's where we went. Uh, the primary places we went anyway. So the group, um, I could travel solo. As a matter of fact, I was able to do a big trip. I don't, some of you guys probably saw that presentation from a uh, year ago and a half ago, whenever I did that. When I went out to uh, Utah and Arizona, I was solo at, at the start through Colorado and then Utah. And then I uh, joined up with the tour group for Arizona. And traveling with people is more fun. Yeah, it's easy traveling solo, but it's more fun to share it. So I invited photography friends of mine. And well, as I said to Kelly and Gail, one of these days I will get your name right. I thought I fixed this, apologies. They have one L, not two. I got a friend of mine at work who has two L's. That's why I get confused. That and I have the attention span of a goldfish. But anyway, so I invited um, five friends and Kelly and Gail decided to come. They're here on the Zoom call. You've probably seen their work around. They are terrific photographers, local photographers who have um, had pictures print up lots of places. You guys can talk more about that when, when we get to your photos. And then my friend Kyle Batson actually from high school who's living van life. He is um, living in a uh, big, beautiful van that he'll talk about. And he's been lots of places. And they're, both of them were like, sure, let's do it. Or all three of them were like, sure, let's do it. So that was really fun. So I kept in touch with them. And like I said, my friend Barbie Winderland knows lots of people out there. And she introduced me to Richard and Susan Duff, who have Duff Bison Ranch out north of Scott City. They are, they are the ranchers who have the bison, but it's not their land that they're on. They lease the land, I think is probably the best way to describe it, but they've been there on that land for many, many years. So um, they were just amazing hosts and they are actually um, working on setting up a, a bit of a bed and breakfast, um, Airbnb kind of um, hosting. So if you're interested in going out there, do let me know and I'll be happy to put you in touch with them. But yes, Richard and Susan were terrific. So the goals, well, all right. So I have those goals. I wanna go see stuff I've never seen before. Well. Just like most people, I used Google Maps to figure out where everything is. So there's the Duff Bison Ranch. And conveniently, here's Monument Rocks, which is gorgeous. Little Jerusalem, which was one of the primary goals out here. Spectacular Lake Scott State Park and also Battle Canyon. So these are the, some of the, those are, the, I guess, the primary places we went. Um, I knew I wanted to make Little Jerusalem at least for one dawn and one dusk, based on uh, Jim's previous presentation. Monument Rocks are gorgeous. You've seen lots of pictures of them because they've been around for a while and they're frankly pretty easy to photograph, but when could we get to them? But also because I am kind of crazy, I like to do astrophotography, as you probably saw on the very first slide of the whole presentation. So I needed to make sure there was no moon or as an early setting, um, either early setting or, no, or new moon. The problem is sometimes I'm not real bright. So I decided to try to do this on the shortest nights of the year. Those were I needed some extra sleep after that. It was worth it, but yeah, I was not real smart to go at that particular time, but hey, it was convenient for the Duffs, so that was a good time to go. Larry Hamey, um, who is a scion of a big ranching family out there, was a wonderful host for us at Lake Scott State Park and the El Cuartaleo Ruins and then down to Battle Canyon. Again, thank you, Barbie, for setting us up with him. And June 2020 worked out, so we all made it work. So the trip, 
I left on Wednesday, got home on Saturday. So just how many photos can I make while I'm there? I don't ever set out with, like, I want to take 5,000 photos because that's too many photos. But I did have some idea of what I wanted to shoot. And if you, whenever you guys do a trip, I hope that you have some idea. Uh, do your research so you know kind of what you want to do. If you're going to Rocky Mountain National Park, well, you probably want to get Sprague Lake and uh, Bear Lake and Dream Lake. And maybe try to drive up Trail Ridge Road. If you're going to Maxwell, where you want to see bison and you want to see elk. Elk are kind of tough this time of year. If you're going out to Quivira, what birds are you looking for? Make sure you have some goals so that way you actually know what you're looking for. But certainly don't let them dictate your trip. If, if it had been socked in the clouds, there would have been no astrophotography. It would have been okay. We would have found out something else. And actually on the drive out there, I realized how pretty the wheat fields were. So I was like, I want to get some pictures of wheat fields. Wildlife? I thought there was no wildlife out there. I assumed that all the ranching got rid of it. Hey, <laughs> I was very, very wrong, which is great. And I knew I wanted to come home with something fun and pretty from Little Jerusalem and Monument Rocks. So it wasn't a big list, but this is what I knew I wanted to get. Hey, look, wheat. I had so much fun with this. And this is a long exposure with the waving part of it here that I got, this was just on the drive out. I left really early on, well, I guess not really early, but considering it's like a four or five or something hour drive, I left plenty early so I'd have time to get pictures along the way. And I stopped on just on the side of the road and got these pretty wheat stalks as they're ripening up. And I've loved that effect in the pretty colors, the oranges, the greens, the yellows. But this is a good example of just one of those kind of grab shots. I just stopped, pulled over on the shoulder and hopped out the car. No problem. But then as we got out there, this was a shot that I knew I wanted to get. I wanted to get a perfect wheat field and perfect sky. And I did. I think Kyle was with me. This was a, our very last day of the trip. I had been frustrated because there's always something. There's big weeds, or we were driving, or we need to get somewhere. There's something. But we were finally able to get this shot that I wanted to get on the very last day of the trip. And I, I'm pleased with this one. I like this. This is very Western Kansas to me. Oh, and then there's wildlife. I love the bison we have up at Maxwell. I've been many, many times. Michael, as a matter of fact, has been too. And it's really neat to see. Well, we went in June, so we have the calves, the red dogs right here being all adorable. And I like this one because it doesn't quite look like Maxwell. Um, I hope many, I hope all of you have been to Maxwell. It's just you know, what, 45 minutes north of us. But Maxwell doesn't quite look like this. We've got taller grass. This is short grass prairie out there in Western Kansas. And you see the bison are losing their winter coats. That's why they look scruffy. But this was really neat. Um, the duffs have a white bison that was unfortunately quite camera shy. I was really hoping to get a picture of it, but I didn't get anything I really liked from it. But there we go. There's some wildlife. And then, oh, the cuddles. Yes, the mommy and the red dog right here. Oh, thank you, Michael. Thank you for your cuddles, too. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we did not rehearse that, but I thought this was nice. Just a just a fun shot that I like. I think I could have I've probably gotten shots like this at Maxwell, but I think it's fun to fun to show the relationship between the mom and the calf. The little tiny horn coming out. <laughs> and so the duffs, uh, they are ranchers. They live on a ranch that is a bit of a drive on a not very good road off of the interstate, it's a gravel road that on, the, on their land. And I went out for a walk just on the property and I almost stepped on this fawn. This is full frame, uh, this completely uncropped, 420 millimeters on full frame. I was close and she just hopped up and stood there just staring at me. I moved very slowly to bring my camera up and got several of these pictures. This was fun, just completely unexpected. Um, this was down on along the stream below their house, the Duff's house. And this was really neat. I was just out for a walk one afternoon and I was able to get, what's that, what's something's flashy? Oh, chat. My photos are not full screen. Hmm. That's not, oh, that's not, that's not showing very well there, Sam, it look okay? Um, yeah, if, if there's different ways of, of view, if you're in Zoom, there's different ways of viewing it. And the, in the top right corner, it says view, and you can click on that. And there are different options for, um, for displaying the, the panelist video versus the screen share. And if you just click on standard, then it should, uh, anybody that's experiencing that, it should fix it so that you can see the photos uh, full screen. 
Thank you, Sam. Thank you. So sorry about that. Uh, anyway, so yes, this was uh, the full frame image uncropped of this beautiful fawn just at point blank range. Goes to show you it always pays to be prepared. Yes, this was with one of my big cameras and a, a one of my long lenses, but still, this is pretty special. Then there's this one. Um, I don't know about my my friends here uh, presenting with me, but I was astonished to see the number of pronghorn antelope. I had no idea they were even in Kansas. I guess I've seen some in New Mexico and I know they're farther north, but man, we saw dozens of these things and they just, they're happy to bound through the fields. They are um, curious. They're not, they're a little skittish. I mean, they're, they're deer relatives, so they're not super happy to get close to you, but no, they were quite frequent. And I like this one. This is also very Western Kansas, the pretty golden wheat field, the one pronghorn, and then out through the layers of the sky, got some, Yep, and the one bird, that's right. And then also the uh, telephone poles. I really liked how this one turned out. This was that same last morning. Kai, you remember that? This was pretty cool. Okay. So then the other goal of the presentation was astrophotography. And this was actually on the Duff's land. Um, when I told Richard and Susan that I wanted to do astrophotography, take pictures of stars, they were very intrigued. They didn't know how that would work. So, and so I told them what I was looking for was rocks. And, Duff, and Richard was like, hey, I, can I show you this? So he actually did a really fun job of going down and taking videos and pictures on his land of these, um, I guess, gullies if we're in the Middle East, call them weighties, of uh, uh, this quite tall rock. This is significantly taller than we were. Um, Kyle and I went down here, I don't know, 15, 18, 20 feet high. And that was really neat. And I'm really glad I had a friend because I also have mountain lions. And the humans are delicious, or so I've been told. But anyway, we didn't see any of them. And the grass was quite tall down here. But this was really fun. This was neat to work together. Um, I was back with the cameras. And actually, Kyle was down here at the end of the, uh, just behind this turn, where we're using our lights to light up the rock and balancing that against the uh, Milky Way above. But yeah, I've been, I was very pleased with how this one turned out. This was a cool example of teamwork. Well, thank you. I'm glad you like that orange right there, Michael. Thank you. <laughs> so there's one of the astro photos. Um, astrophotography can be tough. You want a, there are a few ways to do it. The, the easiest way as far as I'm concerned is a wide fast lens, a wide aperture and a wide focal length. Like for me, this was 14 millimeters on full frame. So real wide and lots of post-processing too. And then I forget which night this was, guys, but this was pretty cool. We had gotten back and it was late and we saw an amazing thunderstorm off well, well east of us. The Duffs were actually pretty sad because they wanted the rain, but this put on an incredible show for us. But what I love is we have this perfect cloud front and then above it, poof, the Milky Way. This was really fun. All, all four of us stayed out way too late watching this show and getting the, the sky photos. Another example of just being prepared. We had the gear we needed and we just set up and were able to get it. Again, this is some significant post-processing because, of course, the lightning in the cloud down here is far, far brighter than up here. But this is a single file from my big Nikon. So, yes, I, I was very proud of this one. And I think that's a cool picture. Got a little bit of red over here. I think that's a wind farm or something. And then Monument Rocks. It's really pretty. We are actually going out there in a couple weeks. My family, um, taking my wife and sons out there to see Monument Rocks and it's gorgeous. These wonderful colors and the bright blue sky. But unfortunately we didn't do a good job of getting there at really good time, really good light. So at one point Kyle said, or we, I was there with Kyle and said, hey, try black and white. And I really appreciate that. I really like what the black and white does to not very good lighting situations. Got this pretty image right here. Oh, mommy's here, Michael, time to go. <laughs> yes. So yes, we got this. Um, uh, well, all, I think all of us had fun, a lot of fun out here at Monument Rocks. Happily, I didn't get a flat tire on this particular trip out there. But anyway, but this was neat. Um, it was a fun use of just a black and white filter. This is a straight out of camera JPEG. And um, another example of just experimentation is so important out there. I thought this one was fun. I like this arch and I thought the light looked really nice on it and the really dark sky. This is just looking up through the window there at Monument Rocks. If you've been there, you know exactly where this is. But I just looked up. This was this has been a really popular picture for me. I love that uh, sunburst up there and you got the big pretty window. Um, 
I thought this was a, another one of those shots I wasn't planning on getting. I just wanted to get something fun and I was there and I just kept shooting around Monument Rocks. Well, one of the neatest parts about staying with the Duffs is that because they've been ranchers there for many years, they know they, they know all their neighbors and they're on really good terms with all their neighbors. So we were able to get something completely unexpected, which is a trip to a place where Richard, that Richard calls Little Egypt. I mean, there's Little Jerusalem and then there's Little Egypt. And this photo from the flyer for the uh, presentation is one of my favorites because it's, uh, to me, it's just completely unexpected. This doesn't look at all like Kansas. Having been to Air, uh, Utah and Arizona, this reminds me of those much more than, you know, flat, green, boring Kansas. So this is pretty fun. And here is a wider shot of Little Egypt. And I can see why he says that. The, especially out here, these rock formations to me look like the decayed versions of like the big pharaohs at Luxor or Thebes. Just a really wonderful place that there's no way we could have, well, we couldn't have found it, let alone gotten into the property, except that our hosts know the folks who own this land and they asked permission and they were, and the hosts were like, sure, bring them on out. So this was a really, really cool evening. Made all the cooler because Susan is a fossil hunter. And amazingly, she just, we were just walking along. I forget, down, I think it was right around here. She just looked down and was like, oh, look, there's some Mosasaur fossils. It looked like a rock. But she picked up Mosasaur vertebrae, which I can, actually I should probably go get, but anyway. Um, and she gave, she gave us four of them. Uh, Kyle got one, Gail and Kelly got one, and then I got two, one for each of my sons, who both, of course, love dinosaurs because they're you know, little boys. And that was, what an awesome, what an incredible souvenir from this wonderful trip. And just happened because we were just happened to be walking through. But yes, the, our tour guides were amazing. I'm really excited to do this again sometime maybe with my sons next time, or maybe a different group of friends, but yeah, this was a really wonderful place. All right, so then the star of the show is Little Jerusalem. We pulled up to Little Jerusalem one evening and it looked real dire out here. This is a pretty good storm and it was moving fast and we had strong wind. And we have this wonderful color over here developing. It was pretty, but also pretty ominous. You see the very bright stone right here. It, and there, there's an issue with the Little Jerusalem. We'll get to that in a second. But this was a pretty cool site when we drove up. And um, my friends are saying, see, this is from up on the trail. There's, there's part of the trail, the, the above the rim trail that walks, that comes around here. There's Kyle and then um, Kelly and Gail over here and they're shooting out across. Well. Um, they're saner than I am. I'm sometimes not real bright. So I actually went hauling, as, hauling my hiney as fast as I could along the rim for the over a mile to get out there, way out there to the west. Because I was like, that's Sunset Point, but that's going to be a pretty good perspective or whatever the proper name of it is, but it, it has a really good view to the west. So I moved as fast as I could and it started to rain. And it was blowing really, really hard. Even with my tripod lowered and legs spread, it was getting kind of sketchy. And it was pretty nerve wracking and the rotter drops and it was worth it. It was totally worth it. You can see these wonderful rocks down here. You have better separation. Like this is a neat photo. But the problem is the, the camera loses all of the three dimensional effect. Like this could, if you didn't look really carefully at the outlines, you couldn't tell that there are layers there. Here you can see it. You can see the different layers out here on the, this far western point of the uh, the upper trail. I got I got lots of shots out there. I love the power lines. Got a neat one zoomed in of the power lines where it's all lit up. Have this wonderful candy colored sky up here. The rocks down here. This is a pretty neat spot, and it was an incredible sight, and also terrifying because I had no idea if the wind was going to shift or the rain was going to come after me. Don't tell my wife that this was really scary. But yes, this was very much worth it. Then there's this shot. Looking a bit heavily processed here on the Google Drive. It, uh, I don't remember the colors being quite so um, garish in my edited version I sent to Kansas, um, what, Kansas Department of Wildlife Parks Tourism Magazine. I got second place in the landscape with this picture. I love this color down here on the rock in the foreground. And then you have the green here and then these incredible colors up here. Yeah, Little Jerusalem is absolutely worth it. And then even after sunset, got this one too. Got those 
amazing colors hiding back there behind the clouds closer to me. That was really special. But I'm going to give you a word of warning. Um, out in Western Kansas, everything is erosion. Everything is down, except for Monument Rocks, because everything around Monument Rocks has gone away. So Monument Rocks is up. But Castle Rocks and Monument Rocks are up. Everything else is down, which, makes, which means Little Jerusalem is a problem, because all the really neat stuff is below you. Well, it's hard to shoot down and up at the same time. So what I want to do next time is I want to figure out how to get a, a tour down in there. You do not, please do not go down into the rocks. They are chalk, they are soft, and there's been lots of damage through the years. I'll go with a guide uh, with um, Nature Conservancy, KWPT, I, I, I think both. I, I, I think it's actually shared. But when if you really want good photos, Call ahead and see if you can schedule a guide. I'm still working on actually trying to get that set up. It's wonderful to see. It's a just an amazing place, but it's really tough to photograph unless you're down in there. So that's a word. That's a, a lesson from the trip is uh, investigate what you're looking at, investigate what you're going to see, and plan accordingly. I'm glad we went. Don't get me wrong, but I would have gotten more better. Mm more pictures than I really like if we had had, if we'd been able to take advantage of a guide to get down in there. But of course, then you're at the, the schedule of the guide, whereas we could get there before dawn and then after, and stay after dark, pretty, pretty much of our own accord. So anyway, so that's my part of the presentation. Gail, you're up. We saw very, quite a few pronghorns. And they just stop and stare at us when we ask. Got some good pictures. Gail, you're a little bit quiet. Speak. horn. <laughs> <laughs> Next picture, please. What, so, what, was this one just as we were driving around, just right out of the Duff's truck? Yes. We were doing some back road driving around. They'd, he'd stop the truck and then they'd stop and stare at us. And this is one of the buffalo from the Duff Ranch. And we, since there was a small group, we just took the truck out. And I, I got to volunteer to feed them. So I dropped the food as we went along. Next. I like how you got that cactus and those little flowers in the very bottom of it. I just think that's really, and then of course, in the other side, we don't talk about that side. But I love the, love the little plants down here. I just think that's. <laughs> it's, well, it's very authentic this way. It's very authentic. But I, I really do love the cactus and the little flowers right there. I just think that's really pretty. Thank you. And that's the little Egypt, the great lighting we had that day. All the different layers you can see. And this is what they call Lone Butte. And along the ridge, you can see the, our people we went with, the Duffs, and then John and Kyle hiking on up there. I hiked up a little way, so it got a little steep for me, so I went back down. And that's all for me. Okay, well, this is the Richard and Susan's cat. We had just unloaded our things into the uh, house and where we were going to stay. And so we we're beginning to explore a little bit around the house. And this is just out of their back door of the patio area. And I was going to attempt to get down low and uh, start focusing in on the head and neck and face of this box turtle. So it didn't quite get to that point because I noticed out of the corner of my eye their cat was coming along and he took a sniff, a quick sniff at the box turtle there. So I had to quickly just refocus on the cat. So I was happy to get this shot and it was kind of special to me. And so it was just a brief and fleeting moment. So, you know, be prepared to change quickly if you need to on a photograph. And uh, that was just, kind of special moment for me that just was an instant and 
just able to refocus and capture the cat coming by. He just sniffed it as he was walking by and kept on going. And by then the turtle was ready to move on. So I really uh, couldn't get down low like I wanted to and photograph his head and neck and face area with a close up. But I was going to try, but the cat kind of interrupted my scene. So just be flexible and be ready to shoot. Okay, next slide. Uh, I love this slide with uh, Sean there in his backpack. And this is our afternoon, early evening, an evening time at the Little Egypt, which is uh, Richard and Susan's friends to the north of their ranch. And uh, you can see how big the hill is there where Sean has stopped to view the scene and take pictures. And I was able to capture him looking at the scene with his backpack. That's probably one of my favorite photos of the trip with Sean being in the Well, well thank you. I, I did the very intentional. I want to make sure I had a nice, nice pose looking completely bewildered. <laughs> But you can see how big the hill is. So we were down in the valley there quite a ways. And uh, just great lighting there the afternoon. There were some high clouds. So the sun was filtered a little bit. So it wasn't quite so harsh. Really brought out the colors in the hills and the rocks. So that was very nice scene. And thank you, Sean. And next. And this was, I think, the afternoon when Sean got his deer shot. We went out exploring a little further to the north out of the uh, backyard area of Richard and Susan's property. And there's lots of wildflowers. And of course, Sean saw the uh, little deer. So just looking around, I spotted this wildflower plant and the afternoon sun on it. So. I just kind of focused in for a close-up shot. So I think if you just look around a little bit and observe what's around you, you can come up with a nice photograph of most anything. And the next slide. And I thought you might enjoy seeing part of the old gas station, which is near downtown Scott City. This was just a block or two to the west of the highway leading out of town to the west of an old abandoned gas station here. I got the old pump and the old gas prices. I thought you might enjoy seeing that. Also on this property is an old plexiglass or glass telephone booth with a payphone in there. And that was fun to photograph. So I took a picture of the glass booth and got up closer and shot pictures of the old payphone which I'm sure is not working, but it was just really cool to see, to see that old stuff. I like this old stuff, kind of like old Route 66 things you see along old Route 66. So old gas station with the old prices and old pumps are pretty cool. So. I I thought it was neat. Uh, we went to the um, really neat museum that they have in Scott City. Yeah. And I didn't realize that, um, forgive me, as I rapidly scroll back here to a map, I don't forget this is silly. Map right here. 83, of course I'm from Wichita, so I just think this is desert out here, but um, yeah, not real good on my geography, Western Kansas. But this Highway 83 is actually an important road. It is, it leads all the way up to the Canadian border, all the way down to the Mexican border. So it, it has been not exactly a um, heavily populated, but still a heavy, it is a heavily trafficked highway. And Scott City is pretty uh, happy to be there at the intersection of 83 and 96. So I, I appreciate that picture of um, uh, Kelly's, there we go, there we go. Give everybody a seizure, ha <laughs> ha To show, um, it's also just harking back to that. I thought that mu the museum was a lot neater than I was, guess I was expecting just because I didn't know what to expect. They had fossils there, because of the near Brara Chalk, but also the history of the area, including the Battle of Canyon that I don't think any of us have photos of, but the last, it was the na last Native American battle in Kansas happened out there. Um, U.S. Army troopers were chasing down some of the, uh, one of the Native tribes, I don't remember who, and the one casualty was actually the leader of the U.S. Army troops. So that was neat to see, and this, and again, it's just an important, because of the watering holes along the way, it's an important route for hundreds, for thousands of years for the native folks. So anyway, sorry. Yeah, so that was pretty cool to see that old gas station and, mm -hmm. and the old pumps. So I, 
Yes, I didn't even notice that. <laughs> the little bit of time I spent in Scott City. Yeah, note that I didn't put Scott City on the uh, map. Aside from the museum, I spent hardly any time there. I'll fix that yeah. with this next trip. And the museum trip, the museum part was very cool too. Lots yeah. of interesting things there in the museum. Yep. Well, and there's also the uh, the I can't remember what the guy's name is, but there's the um, the painter. Yeah. Who lives out there? Who had the other half of the museum, which was really gorgeous to see. Yeah, he's pretty neat. famous. I. Uh, the name escapes me right, right now too, but yeah, okay. wonderful work he did. Yeah, I'm right, done to look that up. Okay, <laughs> and now Kyle, go for it, buddy. Well, hello there. Um, yeah, this was, uh, I guess, kind of a unexpected uh, trip. I was at the beginning of 2020 uh, out in Western California or Southern California near the Mexico border. And uh, um, Sean's invitation was compelling. <laughs> um, it is uh, something that I didn't expect. Um, I was like, okay, I'll go take some, take some photos. Uh, as was mentioned before, I live in a, a, a van that I've converted for camping. Um, and I'm able to travel around the country and work remotely and very blessed with that that opportunity um but western kansas has not been anything that i was really interesting uh interested in before because i've i've driven through western kansas many times and uh didn't really see anything terribly interesting you know when i could go to arizona or the badlands or the pacific northwest um so i was remarkably surprised at what we were able to find out there. And I think as Sean mentioned before, uh, basically everything is down. You know, these formations are, are formed by erosion. So unless you know where you're looking, when you're driving uh, by on the highway, you really just see flatness, nothing in the distance. So you need to have the right people to tell you where to go and where to look um, to find these much more interesting geological formations. And uh, this is the, image from the Little Egypt um, area that they were talking about. And that was certainly, that was, I think our, maybe our last evening, but uh, any of these images with these wonderful uh, dramatic clouds in them is this storm that we basically tracked through the, the evening and the afternoon. Um, and it was, you know, this beautiful light uh, down there and, I don't have a picture of it, but there were some, uh, there were falcons, I believe, or hawks um, nesting on some of these these uh, buttes up there. And I clambered up the rocks with my camera and tried to get a kind of a side-by-side -side, uh, shot of those. But yeah, it was just a remarkable uh, place to visit and would definitely go back, back there again. Uh, next slide. I think it's telling that all four of us, yeah, we went to lots of different places, but all four of us have included at least one shot of this secret spot, which, mm -hmm. is, which, which is pretty cool. It is. Yeah, go ahead next. Yeah. Uh, so this is sort of that, that same uh, timing as, as Sean. Uh, I think it was uh, Gail and Sean and I were kind of out there for uh, a while into the evening, we were planning on packing things up uh, for the night. Uh, but after that storm blew past us, and boy, we got some strong wind that evening. Um, as it continued over to the east, uh, it was just full of lightning. And we were grabbing a bunch of different shots of trying to get those, those shots of lightning. Um, and then being able to to get some long exposures and pull in the, the Milky Way was just a, a wonderful delight. And, and you know, this trip, uh, this and that, the previous photo are, are some of my favorite pictures that I've taken. Um, and, you know, having photographed all over the country and around the world, I, I was kind of chagrined, but pleased that it was kind of in my backyard in Western Kansas that I uh, was able to get some of these shots. Next. And so you can see this is kind of a, 
uh, parallel to Sean's photo from earlier in the presentation. It, it was wonderful to to go out and, and have a partner to go explore down there. Um, you know, one, the uh, treacherous nature of, of uh, the, the rock formations, but we were also able to give ourselves a little hand with uh, the light painting with our headlamps and uh, add a little dimensionality uh, pulling in the the Milky Way as well and we were we were lucky too uh Sean and I when we first went down down here there was a the sky was fairly overcast and we were getting kind of dejected thinking we might not actually get much in the way of uh stars but we stayed just a little bit longer did some different shots and we looked up again and the sky was totally clear so the the timing the luck was on our side being a little bit patient um and we got these these pretty cool images next um and so my last one here this is actually kind of reverse chronologically this is when we first uh started going down into those formations um, and that was the the remnants of the clouds that were just starting to break up heading out westerly looking maybe um and so that was that was what was overhead and it was just just leaving behind and um i i like the getting a little remnant of the glow of the sunset um out west and these little tendrils uh spiraling out with the, with the stars at the same time so yeah it's uh it was a surprising uh trip experience we got lucky with some good weather and some dramatic weather that really gave us a lot of different opportunities to uh take some interesting photos and then we got a more history in there than i expected too a tour of the battle canyon going to the museums uh was really lovely so thanks sean looking forward to doing doing something like that again um sean did a great job of of communicating with all the relevant parties and getting everything set up for us and timing things right. And uh, I think something that also helps me is also just the motivation to get off my lazy butt and go walk around some rocks at 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> uh, Cause sometimes that's when you get the best shot and Sean doesn't seem to have much trouble getting up really early or stand up really late if he knows there's a good shot in there mm -hmm. for it. So that's a, always a great lesson to keep in mind <laughs> well oh sure um i've got two little guys and unfortunately big boys old enough that he no longer takes naps but little guy no little guy does and i'm like i'm i'm, I'm with him i'll watch him while he takes a nap which means i take a nap too yes i thank you thank you kyle I, I appreciate that i i do not remember this um this shot that you got i really like this and i love all those colors you got the beautiful rocks in the foreground yeah it was a really neat place and like you said um i I knew there was neat stuff out there, but it's not somewhere, it's not, frankly, it's not an aspirational destination, which is why I made it into one in the face of COVID, because if it hadn't been for the pandemic, I would have probably tried to go farther. But because of the pandemic, I didn't want to go very far, and I couldn't go for very long. And this was definitely a highlight of the 2020 for me. This was really neat. So um, now on to my... My this is just my lessons. Of course, I'll give I'll give everybody else a chance to to pipe up too with what we what you, what what you learn. Sorry, I've got small children making lots of noise. I assume everything's okay. Anyway, um, be flexible. Yeah, Mother Nature don't care about your plans, not a bit. Um, Kyle and I learned that lesson very vividly on this night when we got. I, I think we got there. It was clear. We head out there and we're like, we can't see any. There's a Michael. Hi, bud. Oh, you're, you're back. Okay. Well, um, oh, geez. Oh, guys. Hi. Oh, geez. So this is my friend Kyle's picture right there. Isn't that cool? So, yes, um, we got out there to the rocks. We're like, oh, great clouds. Oh, no. But Kyle, I, I, as I recall, Kyle was like, no, we, we could stick it out. I think somehow you were able maybe to tell that they were moving along pretty quick because they did mm -hmm. clear up. It was less than less than an hour when they <laughs> got clear. Ethan, you want to come on down and join Daddy, too? Oh, geez. <laughs> Uh, what, yeah, what? I might have used a, a you know a, a weather map uh, application or something to see if I could see where the clouds were moving, and I think saw maybe a hole that there was going to be a hole coming in a few minutes. So that's Which where is, our technology helps us out too. 
Well, absolutely. And it's just the fact that you were able to use that app. I think while we were in this canyon with the, you know, not short wall, yeah, this this is not six feet. These, this is a significant climb up, like I said, yeah. 15, 18, 20, maybe more feet. That was um, very convenient for us millennials, Kyle and I, where we could, you know, still basically cheat. Um, but that was really helpful. But yes, and, and then um, also for my little Jerusalem pictures with that incredible storm that blew past us. Um, I I don't think we had any knowledge that there may be a storm and this thing appears and I get such a wonderful shot out of it. I also learned don't do astrophotography over the summer solstice because that's not much sleep and you need to wait till two hours after. It's the window between two hours. It's um, astrophotography. So the sky finally gets dark enough where you can actually see the Milky Way about two hours after sunset. So this is pushing 11 o'clock. And then you have the, then dawn is at like 5.36, something like that. So yeah, you got a little bitty window to get pictures and what approximates sleep. So yeah, that was a good lesson. Don't do that again. Um, unless of course you can get naps in the middle of the day. Aren't naps great, Michael? No, no, no. <laughs> she, is, she is very, very wrong. Um, and it is also fun. It is always more fun with friends or family in this case. Like I said, I'm going to be heading out in just a couple of weeks out there to Scott City with the family. And I, I won't be doing nearly as much of this um, exotic time photography, but it'll be really neat to be out there. But I just so appreciate Gail and Kelly and Kyle for coming with me because it was really neat. We had partners. We had other people to talk to about what we were seeing, try to figure out what we wanted to do to help prioritize. That was really cool. And then what I'm worried about, because I actually have a big trip coming in October, is this didn't... This didn't, uh, I guess, like my thirst, I suppose, for Western Kansas. Like, I've been there once. I want to go back. Like what Kyle said, Kyle, Kyle and I have both been all over the world. Um, I've been to Saudi Arabia and Australia a couple of times, New Zealand, lots of Europe. And I want to go back out to, what is it, Gove? 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 I want to go back out to Scott City and Oakley because it's so pretty and it's so surprising. And there's nobody else out there. And that's awesome. It's a really fun, it's really fun to go somewhere that's gorgeous and within easy, within easy driving distance and get pictures that very few people get because they drive right past it. So what about you, Noctigals? What about you, Kyle? What did, what did you guys learn? Um, I was just going to remind everyone, uh, like you and Kyle did, you use the buddy system for your, you were out late at night, pretty far away from the house. And you were, you know, in the little canyon, climbing over rocks and, you know, who knows what all <laughs> to get down into the canyon. So, and you were out pretty late. So uh, don't try something like that by yourself. You know, you need a buddy to go with you in case something should happen. So just a reminder on that. You guys did a good job of teaming up together and you did a good teamwork on your photographs. Very nice. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, I think uh, my, uh, just to summarize again, when I said that, like, and then like Gail said earlier too, you know, you really don't know where you are going to find a good photo. It could be, you know, in the most uh, seemingly mundane or uh, usual places that you might have overlooked before, but just the right light or composition or freak moment of weather um gives it a, a good opportunity so western kansas remarkable <laughs> <laughs> yep and what, what's also neat yes we all really enjoyed little egypt but then there are i mean like none of us have a picture of lake scott which is just gorgeous it's that um steep-sided canyon with that beautiful lake we didn't know, i just didn't include a picture of that just due to time and look what look, look, this was perfect timing but that was amazing too. And Monument Rocks was just wonderful. And I'd love to catch it at dawn and dusk, shoot it from each side. And there's Castle Rocks farther north and east, I think. And Little Jerusalem, especially if you get a tour. There's so much out there that uh, to explore, make sure you give yourself some time. And I saw there was one question about um, how much do the Duffs charge? And I um, 
don't know that what we paid is accurate, but I'm very happy to put you in touch with Richard and Susan. So you can, you can just inquire directly with them. It was very reasonable, especially since they included some really nice meals. Um, there are two things that I really worry about when I'm out on trips. Where am I sleeping and where am I eating? But having both of those taken care of so readily was really, really nice since I don't, you know, carry my home with me like Kyle does, for example. But that was that was just awesome. And being bison ranchers, yeah, they they do okay with the meat. That was a pretty nice treat. And as I recall, they didn't even charge us extra for it. I don't I think that was a surprise, the meals they included. Um, but yeah. yes, it was it was wonderful. I'm I'm excited to go back. Probably not this year, maybe next year for a photo trip, maybe the year after. I don't know, at some point. And we must say, Susan is an excellent cook, so you won't be disappointed in your bed and breakfast. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. And it's, it's, since they're right out there, oh, it's got to be, it, you suppose it's a mile, three quarters of a mile off of the road. You wake up, you look out, you see the bison out there a ways on the other side of their, their fence, but you have the beautiful treeless rolling formations out around their land. It's, I hope this is a good... Um, tourism video for this this part of the state because it's really wonderful um anything else uh gail kyle kelly I, I think we i don't know if we have questions what's going on here there's questions yeah um thanks i i was gonna i forgot to say earlier but uh, everybody um watching you can type questions in the chat um either on zoom or on facebook and on zoom there's also the q a thing um one more thing if you're on zoom and you um, and you'd like me to turn your microphone on so you can, you know, use your voice to talk to the panelists or ask a question. Just uh, maybe just type in the chat like, please turn on my mic, and and I'll turn your mic on. So that, um, yeah, it's good to have that interaction. Um, so yeah, let's see. We've got some questions here. Um, oh, Mary Gail asked, uh, did you see any snakes? Um, I. Uh, I, I think so. Yeah. Along that Creek where I saw that, where I saw that fawn at point blank range. Uh, saw lots and lots of frogs, uh, quite a few birds, lots of wonderful dragonflies. That was really cool. And yes, as I recall, I saw a couple of just little like small snakes. I no, none of the, you know, the scary ones, no diamondback, something like that. Didn't hear any either for that matter. Hmm. But, uh, the Duffs also encouraged us to not just simply go wandering through the bison pasture because of, uh, some of the natives. And also, as a matter of fact, the what, let's see, we saw a fox, I saw a skunk, uh, we saw a badger, which is a surprisingly rotund little critter, uh, we saw prairie dogs, we saw burrowing owls, so um, on that land, they also recommended don't go walking out there because you will, because you will fall in a hole and twist an ankle, so that was good motivation to, you know, not do that, but no, I don't, I think I saw one, one or two little snakes along the, along their creek, did you guys see or hear anything, I don't remember anything. I don't think I saw any snakes. No. Something yeah, I think maybe oh. one when we were driving, uh, but nothing okay. long enough to take a picture of. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, and of course, we're photographers. We want to get down right there on the eye level and take a picture of the diamondback <laughs> from appropriately safe distance, of course. So that's one thing I've always liked about snakes. They're smart enough to just leave. There are very few snakes who are going to go like, hmm, I'm going to go after that person, unlike spiders, which are just idiots. But anyway. Um, and, well, I was going to say the Monument Rocks day that we had, the clouds were just incredible, the cumulus clouds, you know, you could compose most any picture that you wanted to with the clouds and Monument Rocks, it was just incredible, that was nice. That was a really wonderful tree. I just wish those clouds would stick around. I've noticed that those little puffball clouds always leave before sunset, and I'm always really irritated about that. They're gorgeous yeah. at four o'clock in the afternoon and gone by sunset. Yeah. And then some, it's just the same day, no clouds in this shot. But anyway, so, yep. And any yeah. other questions? What else we got? Um, Maynard asked, um, are these red colors true or enhanced with the processing? Um, so, I, I am confused. Like this picture, I remember, I, this is how I remember the scene. Uh, strongly colored, yeah, but then I get like, this one, I'm like, need to turn down that saturation slider. So I don't know if I'm wrong in how I remember how I, I, I um, this is not how I remember the, the scene. It was vivid, but not quite so garish right here. And I don't, didn't think my photo that I, dropped into Google uh, Google Slides here was quite so garish either. Um, I don't know if this is Google Slides doing something, me misremembering 
my wife, I'm using a different screen than my big calibrated photography screen up at my desk up there. But anyway, um, otherwise, what do you guys think? So I, there were lots of wonderful colors. What do you, yeah, what do you guys think? I'm, I found some of mine from that, like that same time, same angle. Um, and yeah, well, it's a little bit oversaturated in this image. Um, that that was one of the very beautiful moments um, when that storm was coming through uh, because it was just at that time where the sun was underneath the storm clouds and, and reflecting off of them. And there were, there were just amazing colors that, you know, it's one of those times where I just keep clicking away because the light's changing every single second um, and you're hoping to, to really capture it. So um, there's always that level of interpretation that comes with the camera sensor and, and trying to kind of capture that, that feeling uh, that, you, that you had when you saw it. But I'm not one for over-processing my images either. I want something that's kind of true to life. And so I, I feel like um, most, most of the images that we're sharing are, are pretty true to what we were experiencing at that time. Yeah, yeah. I'm just. I'm a lot of a lot of folks are commenting. You know, uh, the, these are wonderful, superb, um, amazing, and just they the love the beauty of Western Kansas that you guys are showing. So, thanks so much for Thank that. Um, Jim did comment a couple other locations. I don't know. I, I don't think I've heard of them. Maybe you know them. Uh, he said, "Don't forget Point of Rocks." Po like Point of Rocks is the name of the place. May should be great with Princess Plume and Broom in Bloom. And then he said, Castle Rock is a great place to find snakes. So do you guys know about those places? Nope, but I appreciate that Jim is sharing those because yeah, he's gotten some just amazing um, photos out there in Western Kansas. Like I saw he posted earlier that he was out there in Little Jerusalem with Nature Conservancy, I think with a guide on, uh, on a job for them, which is of course the, the best way to get out there and get them. And I think that's wonderful that Jim has that, those connections that, uh, that he can do that. Point of Rocks in Elkert. Kansas. I, I just yeah, thank you, Google. I had I had no idea. Yeah, that I mean, there's so much of uh, Western Kansas that I I just am not aware of at all. And I think uh, you know I, I I was intrigued when when Sean talked about the uh, Little Jerusalem because I had heard that that was something that was a, a new park that was opening up that just looked gorgeous and um, wanted to jump on that because it seemed so fascinating. A kind of Many badlands in western Kansas, as it were. Yeah. Well, um, let's see. I think uh, I think that we're we're about at an hour, and and I don't see any more uh, questions coming in. So um, I'll just say one more time: thank you all, uh, Sean, Gail, and Kelly, Kyle. It was great to have you all and see your photos. And um, I will be. Um, if it's okay, I mean, I, if it's okay with everybody, I'll put this up on our YouTube channel and then share it out to the email list so that the people that weren't able to be here this evening can uh, can enjoy it as well. So, all right, thanks, thanks everybody, and I'll I'll uh, sign us off. Goodbye. Thank you so much, thanks guys. For thanks guys for thank Appreciate you guys for joining it. me. This was this was fun to present with with friends on the trip. Yeah, we're, let's for figure sure. out where we want to go next. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Sand Hills of Nebraska. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. We'll have to do a presentation on that once you guys go. So, yep. Get the gang back together. Well, at some point, Sam, you're going to have to join us. Oh, you know, I would love that. I, I would love that. I, mm -hmm. I, I'll have to get some, uh, and I need to get some really nice camera gear, at least some used stuff. So that he said, push me along to do that as well. Okay. So that's something I actually, I, I'm glad you said that because I actually thought about that. Note that I talked, the, only, the complete extent of the camera gear we talked about was when I talked about astrophotography, wide and fast. Otherwise, it does, and astrophotography, it's just very demanding because stars are, um, you know, pretty faint. This is not an easy one to get, but everything else we've got here, well, and, and no disrespect intended to my friends, None of these are really exotic shots. We have with this, some of these things, I mean, you could have taken this with a cell phone. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure I get some of my favorite shots from my Marx was with my cell phone. Just don't tell my wife I said that. But we, but, but the gear you have is adequate 
to get good shots. If you want to get really extreme shots, well, that can, it's a cell phone picture. I mean, come on, really, that's a cell phone picture. It, the gear you have is adequate to get good shots. I do not care if it's 10 years old. I don't care if it's 15 years old. I don't care if it's a point and shoot. I don't care if it is a cell phone. I'm starting to sound like a Dr. Seuss. What you have is good enough. Unless you go, unless you go really crazy, that's me. What you've got is good. And it's a matter of, um, who was it that said this? I, I bet Jim remembers. If your pictures aren't interesting enough, um, you're not close enough. Was it Kappa? But mm -hmm. some, some photographer said that, and I love that. Because why is this a really neat shot? Because it was out the window while we were driving along, and the, the antelope was like, hmm, I wonder what that thing is. And uh, I think this was uh, Gail, yeah, got this one shot right out the window. I love this picture. You see the pretty grass in the field, but you also have this really neat antelope in front of you. And then you got the bison up at close range. You've got these wonderful rocks. What you're shooting is more important than what you're shooting with. So please, the, the gear is um, far less important than what you're doing with it. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for that. And yeah, just a good, good reminder. Yeah, I went out to Botanica, um, you know, during the tulip time there and <clears throat> had a lot of fun just with my cell phone, getting up close to the flowers and seeing what I could get. So definitely... Uh, no end to what you can do. Um, all right. Well, um, thanks again, everyone. And oh, yeah, Cindy, Cindy said, oh, that's a Jim Richardson quote. If you want more interesting pictures, you need to stand in more interesting stuff. <laughs> right. So thanks for that. And um, all right. Uh, really, for real this time, we're going to sign off. So thanks again, guys. Bye. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye.